Today's episode of XIV Reborn is brought to you by Audible for a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook. All you have to do is go over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Gamebreaker TV. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 21 of XIV Eatery Ball in the Final Fantasy XIV show for December 17th, 2013. I'm your host, Gary Geddon, watching uh, with me today. Watching and talking, actually. Not just watching. Michael Byrne, how are you, sir? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Happy 2.1. Happy 2.1 to you, Gary, and your Happy family and your to friends. You and your, yes. Send Wishing my, you all the happiness me, the 2.1 brings. Send the 2.1 happiness to you and your family as well. And it's okay to say 2.1. It doesn't offend any denomination. So it's, oh, we're perfect. good. Mary 2.1. Joining us as well. A little sleep deprived. How many hours have you been going? Uh, streamed 14 in a row, but I was up for three before that. And then it's been two since I stopped streaming. So going on 20. 19, going on 20. He's a little shifty eyed. Yeah. I can see it. Caffeine's yeah, kicking I, in. I don't know. No, it's not at all. It it's not do doing anything thing. at this point. You're beyond that you know, point. It just doesn't no, even work is, at this hour. Why, I just want to all over my head. You are going to sleep right after this show, though, correct? Oh, uh, yeah, out cold. So why are you uh, drinking co coffee, then? Because if I don't, then I'm not making it through the next the next hour and a half. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, just fall asleep in the middle of the show. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, just one day, you'll just, you'll just cut it back, and I'll just be like... Back laying on that back bed. All right, so... We got lots to talk about. Patch 2.1 is here. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that you guys have been doing over the past 14 hours and playing and all that good stuff. Um, but Live Letter 11, um, there's, there's a few things to go over here before we yeah. jump into all that stuff. Fair we'll enough. get to it. We'll get to it. A um, few remaining little tidbits that dropped. Let's talk about PvP. Yeah, sure. Let's <laughs> you, talk about you PvP. You sound thrilled, Gary. We snuck yeah. it in last week while you weren't here. <laughs> I wants to get the worst out of the way first right now. Trying. <laughs> so two weeks ago, um, let me make this a little smaller here for you. It's two weeks ago we go, uh, was it two weeks ago we saw this screen? Yeah, it's about two weeks ago. I can't see it. A little bit less. Oh, uh, I'll fix that in a minute. Um, so we were all speculating on this image here. Now we have some answers. So skills are earned by competing. Yes. And there are class specific skills, correct? That is correct, Mr. Gannon. That's kind of awesome. That's kind of awesome. It's not just a kind of, gear grind, it's a skill grind. Yeah, it's a skill grind. Well, and they made a mistake during the live letter too that they had to come back in the second half and fix because they they said uh, yeah, you're going to grind out these points doing your PVP and then you can use those points to buy skills or gear. And everybody was like, oh my god, you have to actually make a decision between skills and gear? What a, wah, terrible, wah, what? <laughs> what a terrible decision to have to make. Uh, and then in the second half of the live letter, they came back and they, before they got kicked off, they said, hey, wait a minute, we, we need to fix something. There's one point that you'll use for a set of points that you'll use for uh, skill, skills and one that you'll use for gear. So, yeah, and it has nothing to do with free company, but there are class-specific skills, so pretty cool. Pretty so cool. what are these uh, white diamonds under the certain skills now? Those are upgrades that you can purchase with the same points that you use to unlock the abilities. So you have things called action points, which allow you to unlock abilities and traits. And you can use additional action points to enhance the abilities. For example, one of those, the first diamond might reduce the cooldown of the skill, the second diamond might make it uh, more effective, and the third diamond might give it a new special ability. Now, do you and have some to, of them do, get pretty get ridiculous? These, do you do you choose these in order, or is it just whichever ones it, you want to choose? In order, you have to put you have to put uh, one, two, or three upgrades into it, and that actually costs a lot of your action points, considering uh, the way that action points are distributed in PvP. What do you guys think of the system? Do you like it? It's interesting. Mm. It is interesting. And it is, a good word. I use the word interesting because <laughs> I don't know if I've ever really words. seen this before, which I will say to interesting me, slash it is, scares me. 
To me, I wish they would have, and this is now having jumped into PvP a little bit too, and seen it in action a little bit. Uh, I wish if they were going to do this, I wish they would have taken it to the extreme and almost did all of the abilities were PvP and you learned them and, and it was totally independent of PvE. There's a weird crossover right now where some classes, like I'm a black mage, I have one purpose. That's it. I I just put Five sleep letter word. Yeah, just put sleep on every single one of my <laughs> uh, my buttons and just sit there and PvP all day like this. You know, it's smash not, your keyboard with your face. Just, you're good to go. Occasionally, when Swiftcast is off cooldown, use that and then sleep. But it's so it's the same thing over and over. So oh, that's if, if they were going to do this odd incredibly system, limiting. To, if they were going to do this odd system to try and balance things, I w almost wish they would have taken it a little further to really, really balance things. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in a weird limbo right now, in my opinion. That sounds incredibly boring and limiting. I can't say PvP is boring, though. And, and I can't stand PvP. It's not boring. Uh, I, I'm having fun playing it. I want to play more of it, which is the mark of anything decent in a game, is if you want to do it more. Is it good PvP, though, would is it be, be a is totally it, different question. <laughs> like, is it, is it, are, you, are you enjoying it because it's easy? I don't want to say easier, but it sounds almost as if it's easier. You have one role. You know what you need to do, and it's not really like you're adjusting all that much. And maybe because you're a terrible at PvP, you're loving it so much. You're just Dude, bleed. did you really just do that, Ganon? God damn, man. It's 2.1. It's supposed to be a festival of cheerfulness. And you're just like, maybe maybe you're enjoying maybe you're it because bad. you only have to do three buttons because you're terrible. Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. But that that might actually be the reason. I I, <laughs> I hit Swiftcast, I hit uh, Sleep, and occasionally if I'm on the move, I hit Scape. And that's about it. On a serious note, though, it PvP is, is a game of line of sighting. And that, I mean, it's constant kiting around walls. Two, two walls. Uh, two very I, long I walls. Two very long and obvious These are not, shaped walls. It's not just your regular, like, oh, there's a pillar, and I'm, like, ducking behind it and trying to... No, it is... There are a couple of pillars somewhere in the arena, but very right next to them is an extremely long wall that people will just run around, and you got to kind of cut them off in certain spots. It's, uh... It's something. I'll tell you that. I spent it's something. Four, four, that is, I spent about that, four that, that hours is some, doing it today. That is some review. It's, it's something. It's not getting ringing Premium endorsements Final anywhere. Fantasy 14. Really, it's something. Yeah, it sure is something. It's not getting ringing endorsements anywhere. And we really, obviously, we didn't expect it to. For weeks leading up to this, we speculated yeah. that it may not even be playable. Uh, at least it's playable. Uh, there, I think there's a lot there that as you rank up, there's going to be some people that find some really cool things uh, and really find a groove and create some awesome pre-mades. That's where this game's going to be, is the pre-mades. Um, to me, right now, it's more of an oddity, something that I... And again, I'm only we're only, what, 12 hours into the patch, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm ready to cast right, judgment gonna, on gonna, the damn I'm thing. I'm going to move on to already, me, it's because more right of an now, oddity right Final now. Final Fantasy oh, 14 PvP, it's an oddity. It's it's something. <laughs> um, what else, how else can we describe It's in the game. That's yeah. how we're just... That, the Holy Trinity. Yeah, it's in the game, it's, it's an oddity, it's and it's it's something. There you it's go. It's fun, but I... Here, here's how, how about this, Ganon? It's fun, but I wouldn't call it good PvP. Oh, okay. We'll discuss this a little bit later. Let's let's move on from it now. That and right, subclasses, you... you're totally assed out. <laughs> Don't even <laughs> queue if you're subclasses right now. So two items also in the live letter caused a bit of controversy. People start freaking out. Let's go through these. I want to get your take on this. Uh, Archer damage gets weaker at range. It's only in PvP. That's you. Well, these are both PvP things. Yeah. Yeah. It was the second one. That now, that makes physical it's sense, it's right? Better. You're further away, the arrow does less damage. That I don't know. It's got logical, physical sense. It's got more time for gravity to kick in. What I mean, if you just aimed up a little bit? I think it'd be all right. Yeah, that's that's right. If you could just aim up into the sky, because there's good PvP. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Variables. Nobody will be doing PvP in two weeks. These things don't matter. Um, physical damage always interrupts spell casting. Now, Mr. Burn. That one should be of particular that interest sucks. to you as a black mage. 
That freaking sucks. Uh, it, not might or has a chance to will interrupt spellcasting. If there's, there's a monk in your party right now, I don't even want to play. Like, if, if, if the match starts and out comes a monk, I'm just, yeah, all right, AFK, 15 minutes, I'll be right back. Because it's just, ugh. Uh, and I do have a couple abilities right now, uh, and I'm very low rank still, obviously. Just started. I do have a couple abilities that can get me out of range quickly. The problem is, once they're gone, I'm very uh, susceptible to, to being smacked in the face very quickly. Uh, so, I, and there's some skills that later I'll be able to get that'll also help mitigate and put some distance in things. But yeah, always interrupting on contact, I think, is a bit rough, don't you? Well, here's the thing: when I, because I, I've, I've been doing, pre, I did pre-mates for several hours today. I was playing it. I, I couldn't stop PvPing pretty much. And we had the Black Mage in the pre-made. Now, it, I watched it. It was brutal. And I felt bad. I, when I was hitting a Black Mage on the enemy team, I could only imagine what the Black Mage on my team was thinking, because it was brutal. Having said that, when he did get a cast off, he would make up for all the time he wasn't casting spells in a single Fire 3 cast. <laughs> that he is hit, true. He hit, he hit for 2.1k with a single cast, and I'm like, that's probably why they did that. <laughs> and Scholars and White Mages, sometimes, you don't even, it doesn't even feel like they're being interrupted when you're hitting them because they have all these instant spells that just do so much damage. I get it after seeing some of the numbers, but it's so un, it's so not fun for a black mage play. That's why Summoner is really the place to be because they got all those instant cast dots. It's just, it, it's, it seems a bit off to me having played it all day. I, I find the, the, the overall structure to be fun. It really needs some balancing and some tweaking, and they're going to be messing with this over time. Uh, but if you're into hardcore PvP, obviously this is not going to win you over to play Final Fantasy XIV from other games that you may be playing and for PvP. It's nowhere near enough to do that. It's at best right now, to really? me, I just, I just, a I just distraction. I just heard that they uh, they were adding in uh, camera mode, spectator mode, and MLG just picked them up. That's what I just heard. Yeah, well, Mountain Dew is already signed as a as a sponsor for this one. So day uh, nine is Mountain shout Dew. casting the first Dew tournament the tomorrow for six million dollars. I'll shout. I heard. I'll right. shout. Okay. Actually, starts it's, tomorrow. And chat is saying it best. It's a, a fun distraction. Uh, and then there's other people that are just saying it's not fun at all. And depending on your class, it may not be. But in it all reality, like we've, we've be been fun. speculating for weeks and weeks and weeks on PvP, and it's like, if it is going to be in the game, that's about, I think, all we expected it to be was a fun distraction. Yep. Hopefully it's a fun, hopefully, you know, it, the word fun stays in there. But we had always thought, like, the community doesn't really seem to, like, be just, just clamoring for PvP in Final Fantasy. It just doesn't seem like the right, you know, game. So, no, I mean, another game mode. people in world chat are saying things like, if you're playing this game for the PvP, you're stupid. Wrong game, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but you know, but, but even even if it's not great PvP, it, like you said, sometimes you get bored. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to quest. You don't want to do this. Maybe you're tired of crafting. So a good break for you know, play some PvP yeah. matches and just do something different for an hour. Like that's kind of cool. So they just got to work some shit out. I'll I'll throw a number at you. I would like you guys to know that I am already above rank one and undefeated. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. put that out there. Gee, I wonder. I gee, I wonder what your record is. Yes, it's two and zero. I'll throw you. I'll, 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 I'll throw you. Black Mage, it's two and zero. I'll throw you a number, then, Mister Byrne. You need exactly one thousand one hundred and forty-one more wins to get a full set of gear at rank thirty. Wow! Uh, all right. Well, uh, oh, I, I might not get that tonight because I have to do after dark. Uh, <laughs> so tomorrow for sure. Tomorrow. For all right. Sure. Another thousand wins tomorrow. No problem. If anybody's Getting wondering, rank thirty, though, you bastards. <laughs> Working on Division 2 in Battlefield 4, if anybody's wondering. Just the same. <laughs> uh, so housing also came up uh, in the live letter. Um, so I want to just touch on a couple quick things before we get into the patch. We're getting to the patch. I know we're getting to it. We're getting to it. But good news, uh, houses themselves are not actually going to cost uh, a ridiculous amount of money. So they're not super pricey. Just a couple hundred thousand gil. That's awesome. Most sizes. And that's yeah. the free company houses. So the personal houses, if we ever get to those, cool. The bad yeah. news is the land, the deed for the the, the price for the land, uh, the plot of land is a little pricey. 
And it requires a little, requires pricey. A, a little pricey. And it requires the house a itself. Rank six. House itself is pretty cheap, and you yeah. know, I guess that makes sense. But the land is uh, it's, uh, well, gonna have to sell my soul. Did did all the worlds get the same pricing? Nope. No. Oh. That was the original plan, though. Remember, I mean, Wayne's yeah. like, we're gonna have yeah. it be the same thing. It's not. the The worlds are broken into five categories, uh, based on analysis of population and distribution of gill and gill caps and everything. And then these five groups have their own unique pricing, with legacy pl uh, servers obviously being in their own group with <laughs> wow pricing. Uh, on the deeds, so yeah. You know what's scary? What's really scary? I know somebody who has five characters who had max skill by the time he finished 1.0, and he definitely bought his own house with that money. <laughs> and he is the oh, and we can blame him for these prices. Wow. Yeah. How are how are legacy players working this whole pricing situation? They're not happy. <laughs> there are not as many hundreds of million gill legacy players as people think out there. They are a 1% at best. Sure, some of them may have a few 10 million, some of them may have a few million, but some even still may have a few hundred thousand. It's not like all legacy players, just because they, you know, if they played that long for 1.0, that they are just giant gill fountains that are limitless sources of funds. A lot of legacy players aren't that endowed with a large wallet so they are not very happy especially those who made it did, into did he just, world group did five. you just say that legacy players aren't well endowed he did. in the wallet with the wallet no 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 i you must have cut out then because i all i heard was that mr. sounds happy like 2013 that's legacy like, players are not well endowed. that sounds like <laughs> wishful thinking mr burn <laughs> Where uh, Bernie Bernsey, oh, yeah. where does the game breaker, where does the game breaker nation uh, fall to this? The server is we're, there, we're in the middle. We're middle? we're on Behemoth, and that server falls right in the middle of the five categories. So if you're looking for average pricing, what's the average middle class server pricing? Yeah, that's actually what I was wondering. It's, so what what, what it's is ours. it? Where's it fall? And what's it falling it's at? Ours. What? You ready? Eight million starting gill uh, for the small plot fifth class land. Not bad. That's the worst. 125 million gil for the largest first class plot of land. Mm. Each side. Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. Don't worry, Gary's got that all under control. Don't worry. I'm, you, you guys need to borrow some gil? <laughs> is, it, is it all he, handicrafted? Did you, <laughs> did you, did you he handicraft has, it all? He has to have been doing something with, uh, instead of leveling. He's been getting ready for this moment when you need him most. Need wow. a plot. Must get a plot. And and what was funny is when these numbers started falling, they didn't use these numbers uh, during the live letter. They used the lowest class group of servers. Of course. You know, they take the sting off of it. Has by the internet completely gone crazy when they heard these oh, numbers? Oh, it, it's well, that, gone ape shit. That didn't when, when, when they first said the four million mark for the cheapest, in uh, in Reinhardt's uh, live chat, we were like, is is he is he mistranslating this? Is he's got to be mistranslating this? That's no four million, forty million, four four million, four. What? And then Reinhardt's like, you could tell he was even thinking about it for a second. There's a backspace or two and a couple of zeros fixed and the, and aligned as he's typing. And we're like, holy shit! This is nowhere near the affordability that we thought this was gonna be. And that's on the cheapest servers. And then they wouldn't even talk about anything. They just said the rest of the pricing's in the patch notes, which which will be out after the live letter. And when it came out, Reddit went nuts and the forums went nuts. And it's hard to say that they're not justified here. So where are most free companies sitting right now? Like as far as like how much gill they've got, <laughs> not nuts. owning homes. <laughs> as I'm gonna say, like, is it going to be Thank a long? <laughs> but is but is this a good is this a good long term goal for a lot of guilds now? Free companies to kind of look at and start really stockpiling and have a, a longer, you know, hey, this is, this can take maybe a few months to kind of work up towards. And that's where some of the debate is. It's why would you make something in the patch notes so central, such a big draw of the patch notes, if you didn't expect people to fully enjoy it for several months after its release? And not only that, but I do think that they intended just as they said, for people not to buy houses for three months. 
mainly because the current function of a house is just that. It's aesthetic. It's a house. You set it up, you have some furniture, and after that, you're done with it. Most of the big features will not be coming for several months, such as the airship building or the chocobo raising or any of the other little features, the workbench for crafters, the sure, retainers but, but, for your but free company. You, but still, all these things are going to come. I mean, don't you guys agree that it's really important? I think I think something that a lot of MMOs lack is are these big guild free company-esque goals for gr large groups of players to work together towards. I mean, I've seen it in MMO after MMO where they don't have things like this that are really hard to attain. That whole like group camaraderie structure of what a guild is supposed to be kind of starts breaking down a little bit. I don't know. I think this could be a really positive thing that like people can start planning and plotting and really looking towards something that might take months. And when everybody kind of went crazy on this one, to your point, that's what Yoshi P came out and said. I mean, so there's two other factors here. These are auctions that those are what the prices start at. So the 8 million plot goes up, and six hours later, if nobody buys it, the price goes down. And what, what is it, Mr. Happy? It's like 0.14% decrease. Yeah, mistranslations are great. Yeah, weren't they? I was, the first, I was like, that is not... 14 percent that's not 14 percent that is that is 0.14 percent so mm. every six real hours the price does go down so you're getting a little bit of help there as long as nobody's going to buy the damn thing and you kind of swoop in when you can now yoshi p also took to the forums after the live letter <laughs> days after the live letter was it yesterday or today japan time? it was I, it was I, to, I was today yeah yeah it was today J japan time so uh to kind of explain this, because there was a huge like 60-page post already uh, of replies. And so he's echoed kind of what you just did, Gary, is that we want this to be more of a long-term goal where 80% of the free companies we think will be legitimately able to afford the house that they want within a three-month window. Uh, obviously, we, we've built in a, a X factor here for RMT when we've done all this analysis. But this is, we want this to be a longer term goal. Yeah, you need to get rank six in your free company, then you can buy it. And we anticipate about 80% of the companies will be able to buy it within three months. What I don't, and what, where the internet is a little unhappy, and I can agree with them, is for big grand companies, Game Breaker Nation, this isn't a problem, right? It sucks that it's more, way more expensive than we thought going into it. But Game Breaker Nation has enough laying around that if we really wanted to, we could go and buy a small plot right now, a grade 5 one. But it's not what we want as a free company. And we've all agreed on that, that, you know what, we're going to forego having a house right now and continue to save because we, we want the bigger plot of land and everything. So it does give our free company something to work for. But or there's people out there that don't like big free companies like Game Breaker Nation and other groups that want that circle of friends that's 10 and 15 people. For them, you're in the 20% that you're not going to be buying a house within three months from now. And now a big feature that was originally talked about being in launch and was delayed until 2.1 is now unavailable for at least three to six months. And there, Yoshi P has also said that over the next three months, there will be in uh, added reductions to those overall numbers as well that will continue to make them more and more and more affordable as time goes by. So it's those small free companies right now that I think the, the ones that get screwed the, the most that really wanted some housing, and now it's just, wow, we don't even have a shot at it. GBN, yeah. GBN, join the GBN. <laughs> it's a lot of good right? people there. It's a lot of good yeah. peeps there. You could get over there, do it. And, and one last thing is it's not like you can – get a small house and settle for a small house now and work your way up either. Right. Another important note. When you get rid of your house, you don't sell it for a price. You're just like, buy. And you don't get any sort of monetary reimbursement. What? So if you dropped 20 mil on a house yep. it, with the intention of moving up to maybe a 40 mil house at some point, you do not get any of that 20 mil back. You can keep oh, the furniture. That's... Yeah, That's, you can't upgrade. You also can't sell any of the furniture once it's been placed. And you, you can't, can't take keep it any back. of it? You, you, you can't can you, sell you, like, it on the market. But can you, you can, disassemble you can, it to keep it? Yes, you can disassemble it to keep it, but it is now invalid on the marketplace. As but the well. house itself is just gone kaput? See ya? Done? No monetary reimbursement. 
Yeah, and zero. you can't upgrade a plot of land to a bigger plot of land. It's a second or a third purchase. Yeah. That sounds so like maybe it'll change in the future. I could see that could see them changing something in the future to make that a little bit more easy to bear. Yeah. That just that makes sense. All right, anything else before we want to start talking about the patch? Anything you guys want to go over before we start talking about the actual patch? No, I just want to start talking so about you the just actual want to go patch. To sleep. Yeah. No. The, the, Final note on housing, though, Mister Mister Happy, were you okay with the prices as a large free company, or or were you guys kind of pissed too? Being even, legacy. Even I'm not gonna drop names, but even the richer members were like, "Yeah, I'll pay 500k for a sleeping bag and just sit on the and sit outside." I I, I don't think this is gonna happen anytime soon. Uh it's expensive. I'm telling you, people have the wrong impression about legacy players all being super rich. It's just and, not the case. And it's also and, the idea and well that... well endowed, but you've cleared that up for us, too. <laughs> Yoshi P is also assuming that they that people would put all of their money into this, almost, when he's making these assumptions about buying in three months. They're, it's not like that's the only thing to spend money on at this point. Sure, it's probably the biggest thing to spend money on, but that assumption that every single dime will go into it, you know, everyone's doing duty roulette every day, everybody's doing uh, yeah. the guild has things, everybody's doing their dailies, and everybody's taking that guild and pulling it. It's almost an unrealistic thought and it's just even even legacy or not it just doesn't make a lot of sense i could see where he's coming from on some things but some decisions definitely don't make sense in the post for those in chat that are a little concerned though yoshi p did say that personal housing when slash if it becomes available later in the game will have drastically different pricing schemes there you go so, there you go. All right, we're going to talk about the patch. First, I want to tell you guys about a great deal we got going on with Audible. I want to hook you guys up with a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook just by going to the URL audible.com slash gamebreaker. Put it in the old web browser. Go over, make an account, download the iOS or Android app. Let me take a real quick listen to a fantastic book. This is Eldest. This is the book two in the uh, Aragon series. Seeing men torn apart by the cull, a race of giant urgles, and the ground a bed of thrashing limbs, and the dirt so wet with blood it soaked through the soles of his boots. If any honor existed in war, he concluded, it was in fighting to protect others from harm. He bent and plucked a tooth, a molar, from the dirt. Bouncing it on his palm, he and Sephira slowly made a circuit through the trampled plain. They stopped at its edge when they noticed Jormunder, Ajihad's second-in-command in the Varden, hurrying toward them from Trondheim. Fantastic, fantastic book. Much better than the movies, by the way. So, the Aragon movies. But the book's great! Check out Book 2, Eldest. It is on Audible. So is Book 1, of course. Um, and you can be downloading one of those uh, absolutely free. All you got to do is make sure you go over to audible.com slash gameberg and like I said, make an account today and get to downloading Eldest or one of the uh, other thousands of uh, great books they have on Audible. Love having them on as sponsors and by supporting Audible, you support Game Breaker. All right, let's get on to talking about patch 2.1. Universe. Go ahead, Burn. You just just take the reins and go where you want. Man, to go there's and... okay. So the first first thing, let's start with this, Mister Happy. You log okay. in. You, there's all this new stuff to do, right? Yeah. What did you actually end up doing first? Garuda Extreme. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tell us about that because you said PvP, and then all of a sudden I see streams that you have got Garuda down, and you're going to take Titan Extreme next. Yeah, that's that's what happened. Everybody was on, and we were like, "All right, let's get the the PVE content out of the way, so we can go PVP for the next three months and start saving up every penny for a house." So, how was uh, extreme modes then? You know what? I honestly didn't expect them to be as different from the hard mode fights as they actually were, especially after seeing the video. Sure, you can find tidbits of little things that obviously were different in the videos, but for the most part. The fights didn't, the, the previews that they gave, other uh, with the exclusion of a few minor details, didn't look so vastly different that it, we didn't think that the fights would play out in the same way. They are worthy of their extreme titles, and anybody looking to take them on at the lowest possible gear level can expect probably a challenge equivalent to somewhere close to turn 5 in terms of 
doing it at the minimum gear level available. Uh, Garuda Extreme, very pleased with the fight. I mean, I'm sure it is always a pleasure with that background music, but the fight itself totally took me by surprise, some of the directions that they took with the mechanics. And uh, Titan 2, definitely familiar fight, but not at all the same at the same time. So the patch took Gary uh, 24 hours to install. That's that was how big the the downtime was. What? And the, it was 24 hours, and it ran long. Uh, <laughs> they needed another hour and 45 minutes on top of that to to get everything going here. So there wasn't just patch 2.1 that was implemented, though. They did make some changes to server architecture, data centers, and the, the way everything lined up. So correct me if I'm wrong here, because this kind of, the post got very circular when, and started kicking back to the same thing here. Basically, what used to happen is when you logged into the game, you would hit the world servers first, and it would split you to show either NAEU or Japan data centers. Uh, and because everybody was being funneled to that one out of two choice, the, the lobby server was actually under quite a bit of duress, and sometimes the world lists wouldn't populate. So you couldn't see the servers that were in North America EU data center or in the Japanese data center. Now, with going on to Steam in the future here, PlayStation 4 coming up next year, and trying to push into China with a release there, that wasn't going to hold anymore with the number of errors that people were getting. So they took this opportunity to also divide up into six data centers instead of two. So they're reducing the load on all the server architecture while increasing the capability and capacity of the servers as well. Have you so been they able did to quite a bit there. Have you been able to determine if it's helped at all with any of the, uh, the, oh, the yeah. lag and things yes. that you guys are seeing? Yes. Yes. Massively. Yeah. And, I mean, you guys would know more, especially in the extreme mode stuff. You guys have taken on Titan and, and the triple landslides and everything like that. So you've probably seen it more than, than just running regular instances. But any of that end game content uh, and in PvP... Yes, it is very, very noticeable that the servers are recognizing a lot more and recognizing position a lot faster. Uh, one weird snafu that became of this, though, was a weird little data center login thingy, and one of our viewer questions in the original show notes was asking about why do I have to pick a data center when I log in, even though I already have a character that belongs to a certain server, and that server's already assigned to a data center. Uh, the answer is, you're telling the game which data center you want to default log into, so that the next time you log in, it will automatically default to that data center. Now, if you want to create a character on a different server in a totally different data center, you're free to do so. This in no way limits your decision, it's just a way to break up the lobby and disperse people across a wider area. And to be honest, damn, this should have been done a long time ago because things are flying. Even right off the, the patch launch, there were a few lag issues here and there, but overall, I, I, like Mr. Happy and I were talking about pre-show, pretty damn smooth launch for a patch this big. There's oh, been yeah. very That's few fantastic news. problems. Yeah, they did a really nice job. So uh, you checked out some of the primals, I guess. How about the Crystal Tower? Let's talk about the Crystal Tower a little bit. I mean, that's, Let's that's... not talk. <laughs> Come on. Let's talk about the Crystal Tower. Uh, so remember when I said it was pretty smooth, right? There is one big bug right now. <laughs> and it has to do with the Crystal Tower. <laughs> so there's a, there's a quest to attune and get into the Crystal Tower. Actually, there's a quest to do everything in this yes. match. Lots if you want to open up PvP, there's a quest. If you want to open up the barbershop, there's a quest. If you want to open up the hard modes, go do the quest. If you want to open up the new dungeons, go do that quest. There's a quest for everything. And the quest for the Crystal Tower doesn't work. Right now. Ouch. It makes you go after, in the quest chain, in the duration of this quest chain, it makes you go after four specific fates uh, that pop in various areas uh, on the maps of Eorzea. Uh, now, the problem is, there. it's a recognized bug. They, they did acknowledge it a few hours ago. 
that the new fates for the Crystal Tower aren't behaving nicely with the fates that already existed in the zone, and therefore the Crystal Tower fates are almost not spawning. They're having instead of spawning on a pretty regular cycle, so people could do these quests. Who knows? You could stand there for 15 minutes for one, then there's people that are saying that they've stand in that spot for two hours to try and get it. Uh, and so this quest that generally should have taken 15 to 20 minutes, maybe half an hour if you're a little bit unlucky on these Fate Pops, is now taking people upwards of four to eight to ten oh, hours fantastic. Hey. to complete and get attuned. Now, they have acknowledged oh, it's happy. a bug. They Turn are five. going to fix it. Uh, Turn they have five keeps needing something scheduled. to do. So right. kind of, they got, you got something to do, Mr. Hat. Oh, yeah, I still got to do Coil this week. Yeah, so the fa if you do get the Fates, it, they totally work. You can com complete the quest and everything. It's just the spawn that's really foobarred right now. Uh, and they are going to fix it. There's maintenance scheduled 18th into 19th, so tomorrow into the next day to, to confirm it and fix it. Uh, but until then, if you're going to try this over the next 24 hours, just know that you could be waiting for the fates for a long time, but they will pop, uh, and you will be able to do the quest. Just have to All right, it's a little, a little speed bump with the Crystal Tower. But actually, I want to talk, talk about, like, from your perspective, Happy, about, you know, people that have cleared uh, um, turn five. Is there a lot of content now for, for you guys to, to, to be hammering on? Well, with the housing being semi unaccessible, depending on who you are, uh, extreme mode primals in all reality. There's going to be a lot of collections. There's some new, highly desirable items that are equivalent and/or better than finding coil gear. Uh, there's going to be some farming there. Ultima, of course, everybody has to meet him at least once, and then of course doing the main story missions. I I really think it's not enough. In all honesty. While there's a lot of great things to do, and a lot of it's definitely going to hold people over for 2.2, I am more interested in 2.2 at this point after having played today than I am in the remainder of the three months of 2.1. That's wow. not to say that is not to say that 2.1 wow. doesn't come with a lot of stuff. And I think what right. 2.1 did, it's going to help players who were thinking about getting into the game and they weren't really sure. It's going to affect those players more than any of the players who now, when they hit level 50, they look and they go, well, I can do this, I can do that, I can have access to this. There's very clear steps they can take to move upward the chain towards working towards the Binding Coil and the Crystal Tower. There's a lot of options now, and Yoshi P used that word a lot when he spoke in the live letter. He said, we wanted there to be a lot of options for people. The problem is the people at the top only have sideways or down to go. Now, the housing was suspected to make sort of changes to that. And for the most part, everything else is sort of semi-solo content. Treasure hunts, PvP, you can solo or do with the group uh, if you're interested in that here. It's not uh, really a ton of stuff for you, huh? I, I have a lot of fun playing PvP, and I'm definitely going to pour my time into it over the next few months. But I still feel that it was more of a quality of life with some story thrown on top of it patch. Because the quality of life on this patch was immense. It was unbelievable some of the things they did. Um, and the story that they added, I'm looking forward to it, of course. The uh, the fights that they added are great. There's no denying everything they did was well calculated, well done, and well appreciated. However, for the people, the very small population at the very top, it's definitely still going to be just barely holding them over, if at all, until patch 2.2. Everybody else will be fine. Just the people who are at the very top who rush I was going to say, like, Bird, on your, on, on your end, you've kind of got a, a lot to kind of bang on, right? We're, my side is like the perfect speed, right? Uh, it's with Game Breaker Nation where we've got multiple groups in COIL but haven't completed COIL yet. That's the, the progression level where we're at. If you are at that same point where you are progressing through COIL's turns and, but you haven't cleared it yet, um, this is the perfect time for this big a patch for us because we still have a little ways to go on the, the old content, the, the coil stuff, and now we have this new expanded library of other things to do that is pretty much level and gear appropriate to where we're at because we're still progressing through coil. 
So there's, it's just a ton of stuff for us to do. Now, if you are behind that even, now I consider myself, I don't consider myself MMO casual, but I do MMO hop. So, okay, well, maybe slightly casual. Uh, if you're even behind that, like Game Breaker Nation is, and you're not even in turn uh, any of the turns in Coil, holy shit, you have a ton to do. If you are just picking up this MMO now, wow, you have got a crap ton of stuff to do, uh, and it's unlikely you've come across this much in an MMO that's this new just picking it up. So I agree with you, Happy. To me, if you're at that still farming coil or earlier, this is a fantastic patch for you. There is tons of content, tons of fun stuff, quality of life. We, we, we cut the whole patch notes section out of the show today so we could talk about the patch itself. Go read the patch notes for crying out what loud. What are some of the there highlights, ain't... though, from there? What, what are you thinking that is like some, some things in there that people You can miss? see Odin and Behemoth now. <laughs> it's just... Just stupid small stuff like that, Gary. Like, that's been fixed. You can see those. The The menus have been streamlined. Instead of 15 icons in the lower right, you've got five or six, and they're all nested windows that lead one to another in a logical sense. You can sort your inventory. You're, it, it's There's just stupid stuff that should have been in the game at launch. Not white knighting it. it. There's a lot of this that should have been in the game at launch. But now that it's there... The game's just that much better for the people that already enjoyed it because now it's not like you had to fight the game to play in some regards. I think that's a fair statement. And, and you and I, uh, in, in our playing, Gary, we, we said that about certain aspects of the game where you felt like you were fighting the game to be able to do something. That's not there anymore. Oh, and by the way, here's an ass ton of content on top of all of these fixes for you. Only so having just, to hit escape once well to skip cutscenes. <laughs> yes. Only having to hit escape yeah. once to skip cutscenes. Yeah. So it's, it, it is... Uh, now, that being said, there are a couple things that they did sneak in there that aren't in the patch notes. Bard, you got one of them. There's an ability change that wasn't in the patch notes, right? Yeah, there is. There's actually three, I think, that they changed. Uh, Reign of Death's TP cost got brought down by 20. Not a big deal, because don't see myself using it that much anymore. Thank you, Warriors. You can handle that. Uh, the other two were, I actually don't think they were nerfs. Because looking at my damage doesn't look any different. I honestly think they were, because a lot of tooltips got fixed. A ton of tooltips got fixed in 2.1. I honestly think that what looks like reductions were actual were actually truthful values that were misrepresented in the 2.0 tooltips because we lost 10 potency on straight shot, we lost 20 potency on blood letter. They do not look like they're doing any less damage. So I think it was honestly just a tooltip fix. What else do you think, uh, Mr. Byrne? What else is like a huge, uh, what's the biggest quality of life feature that you're most excited about that hit? Ooh. Well, I mean, sorting the bags is pretty badass. Oh, man, that sort you, you feature. Forget you forget how nifty that is until you can't do it in an MMO. <laughs> that sounds so cheesy, right? What's the best feature? Oh, I love being able to sort my inventory. Oh that, my god, that's so awesome. Gary, you have to see the, the, the parameters you can set to the sort. It's not like, oh, I can just sort it and it'll go and sort. You can literally set exact parameters to what you want everything to do with, uh, with a few commands and executions. You can set it so that all weapons will be first. You can set it so that you can sort your armory chest by item level. That you can uh, sort items by in a, in a gear set or not. It's something that people are definitely going to have to grow a little bit used to because it's got a lot of features that people who are very nitpicky about where their items are are definitely going to enjoy the little shortcuts. Oh yeah, when I saw how badly you could sort this, and I just had to take my pants off. There was no way I was going to play this game with this new sort feature with pants on, Gary. This was a pants off it's a moment. Pants off patch. It's a pants off moment. That's why you only see the upper half of his body right now. Right. Pants off patch. Right. Now there was a change with limit break too. That I'm not quite speaking of like ability class changes. There was like a little bit of a ninja change there with limit break. What was that all about? You're talking about the change where if you have multiple, you have stacking classes yes. now, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a lot slower. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Because I never before have I done an entire fight and not seen that bar fill up to three before a somewhat reasonable mark in the fight. Yeah, almost never do you have to wait until the very end of a fight to see a limit break gauge filled up to 
three. And running double bard, uh, definitely a lot slower. I guess not having double paladin sort of made up for it since warrior. Very much loving the changes that were implemented there. But uh, yeah, you're overpowered now. It's a great. They they call it overpowered because it's overpowered. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, I in in all reality though, I I don't know. It there's it's encouraging class diversity, and with all the changes, there's a lot of room for diversity now that there wasn't in uh, the previous patch. Where it was monk, black mage, bard, or kobold, pretty much, except for the few people who were very skilled summoners and dragons. So the big question now, 2.1's been released. When's 2.2 coming? <laughs> I would love the, the to say The day 2.1 comes out, we're saying when does 2.2 come out? Is it here I, yet? Really, it's it's got to be March, right? Well, if he's going to keep uh, the promise to us. Yeah, uh, it's, it's two and a half to three months. We're going we're gonna to be talking about content in mid-January during the live letter, or the late January in the Os Osaka live letter. So, uh, yeah, I, I'd say March. I mean, yeah, and he seems... He seems uh, more confident in that because in April, when he's having another live event, he wants to do Leviathan hard mode challenges, yep. and he wants the content to already be available before the challenge is actually issued. So, definitely a level of confidence coming out of Yoshi P on that one. I mean, it sounds like you guys are giving two thumbs up to the to patch 2.1 as far as like... Definitely. Oh, almost, definitely. You know, across the board. A few things with the housing and stuff, a little bit mixed up in the Crystal Palace. I mean, when, when is that? That's getting fixed tonight, so... That should hope uh, yeah, tomorrow into the 19th with the whole yeah. time changes. Anything else you guys want to discuss before we move on to some viewer questions? It's just badass. I, if, if you were holding off uh, purchasing the MMO because you wanted to wait and see it, uh, how it played out because you were burnt by 1.0 uh, and you felt 2.0 server <laughs> issues, I'm going to wait. Buy it uh, now. If you were on the fence... There's no question that it's it's a buy it right now. If you're gonna buy it only for PvP, you're dumb. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Don't. No, you don't want to line a site that badly. No, don't don't do it. But if you were on the fence about it, I would definitely say buy it. And if you stepped away, if you weren't a turn five clearing free company, and that's why you stepped away, if you were before that content and you stepped away, it's definitely worth checking out. Just the same way as you know I. All of us periodically go back to WoW and other games to check it out. It's that good. They did a really solid job with this patch, Gary, especially given the fact that it was three gigs. This was a monster. This was a lot of stuff to be adding. They executed it well. There's a bug or two here and there, and there's already fixes scheduled for it. Well done. Jeez. Kudos, guys. Great job, Squeenix and Yoshi P and team. It's like as big as some other games. Like a whole download a whole other game. Yep. All right, let's do some and you can questions. cut that check to Mike Byrne, <laughs> care of go. Game Breaker, because <laughs> I know somebody's going to say it. <laughs> you shall. Uh, support Game Breaker. Bye for supporting our sponsors. Today's viewer questions are brought to you by Netflix for a free 30-day trial. Just head on over to netflix.com slash TV. All right, so first up today, uh, Tarmus Riker asks, and I think you touched on this a little bit earlier. He says, oh, why do I have to pick a data center if my character is already on a server? Yeah, Go that's server. because you're the first time you log in, you're telling the game what data center you want it to default to. So find the one that your server is on and select that one, and you'll always default to your server where your character already is. So there's no choices on like moving them or anything like that, correct? Mm -mm, no, your if your character was on server A and server A got assigned to data center A, it's sitting in data center A waiting for you to select data center A right now as your default. Interesting. Okay. But it's it's not going to automatically pick that for you because people have multiple characters, right? So it, it's not, it doesn't know which one's your main. All right, next up from Heal Them All. It says, uh, did Cure 3 actually become somewhat useful in this patch or is it still the red-headed stepchild of healing spells? Tier 3 definitely saw some big improvements in this patch. Uh, definitely seeing healers use it more, especially with the changes to Medica 2. Not nerfs, changes. Definitely don't think they are nerfs to it. Uh, overall, I think it's a far more useful spell now. That direct healing is a lot more valuable now than it used to be, especially with some of the extreme fights demanding heal it now moments. Mr. Byrne? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the radius buffed as well, 
but the cost being downed is is enough to to at least get people to they use it. They did increase the radius. Is it how much though? Like two yalms, but it's a oh. it's, no, it's a noticeable two yalms. Surprisingly, I'm actually getting hit by it when I'm. Are you finding not standing it? On top are you somebody. finding that the extreme mode primals have been tuned to make it more useful? I feel like they definitely like have some of those abilities. Oh yeah, I feel like grouping up is uh, definitely a more reliable strategy on some of the extremes. Cool. All right, last up today. You guys are gonna love this one. Adina oh, wants yeah. to know how long before people are complaining about nothing to do. <laughs> two point one seems to have so much that saying two point two is only three months away is shocking, isn't it? Well, I think it'll start probably today. Probably, I say today. Probably. Probably. Nothing. Always. Later today. <laughs> Michael Pomeroma, follow him on Twitter at Mr. Happy One Two Two Seven. Make sure to go over his YouTube channel as he now goes to sleep. <laughs> and make sure to watch his Twitch channel as he's been streaming tons and tons and tons of 2.1. It's always a good time. Hang out in the chat and hang out with Mr. Poveroma. Always a pleasure, sir. Uh, Michael Byrne, follow him on Twitter at Magic Man, M-I-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1. And uh, make sure to come over and watch This Week in MMO as well. Oh, and I should and after say... After Dark. After Dark, all these great shows. Uh, another new show I want to plug. Um, even for you, I know you, most of you guys love Final Fantasy and don't like uh, pay attention to other MMOs. Well, we've got a brand new show that is not any game specific, and it's a real lot of fun. It's a real lot of fun. That's the tagline. It's a real lot of fun. It's called Game Breaker, the show. It's myself, Mr. Pat Crane, Coltrane, Mike Shaftnet. It is a blast. We cover like the top weeks uh the, the week's top gaming stories and go watch episode one it's up on game breaker it was a ton of fun so even if you're only following final fantasy 14 go watch it because you'll you'll find something that's a good show so all right uh we do the show live what's next week wait is next week a holiday something maybe we got the christmas, christmas holiday in the game tomorrow if that's what you're talking about no what's next week i don't know what the date is are we doing a show next the 24th week? i believe yeah so we're not doing a show Seven next days. week that is Christmas. Okay, well then, yeah, go get your Santa costumes uh, or your snowman costumes in that event that starts tomorrow. Uh, happy, happy holidays, happy New Year, mm -hmm. and uh, don't forget the crossover events that start in January. <laughs> Everybody, have a great holiday. Stay safe, be merry, and uh, we'll see you after the holiday. Have a good one.